Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. Welcome back to uh, Z Horse Webinars. We're really happy to have you guys join us today. As you can see, Juan and I are here. We have a new victim, uh, actually a new guest with us today. And it, I'm going to let him introduce himself in just a minute. For those of you who are new to us, Juan and I work very closely with Z-Horse. Juan is the risk manager. I'm an advisor. We work uh, with the GRC world out there. So this is all about uh, risk and risk management. And we are indeed blessed, I think really blessed to have Jim Ambrosini with us today. Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because you do it so well. <laughs> well, thanks, Dan. And, and hello, everyone. Great to be here. So I'm Jim Ambrosini. I work for a consulting company called the Infinite Group, or IGI, where I serve as a virtual CISO for about six or seven clients, helping them through various strategic and technical aspects of the security program. I've been in the information security field for well over 25 years, working mostly in global consulting firms. And then I went prior to this role, I spent four years at a major bank implementing a technology risk management division. So it's great to be here. Thanks a lot. And and now everyone, you can see why we have Jim here. He's an expert in cyber uh, area. And so I thought we'd start with a really easy question, but one that's really hard for me. So I hope other people out there have the same feeling. We talk about cybersecurity and then we talk about cyber risk. The question that I put to you, Jim, is there a difference? Do they mean the mm -hmm. same thing? Could you define them for us so that when we're using the terms, we actually mm -hmm. know what we're talking about? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. We get that a lot. So they're, they're interrelated, but different. So cyber risk is any danger of financial or reputational damage uh, or disruption from a cyber-related incident. So again, it, it deals with the let's say the bad things that could potentially happen through something cyber related. Cybersecurity is actually the, um, the tools, the processes, the people, let's just call it like the things that are put in place to avoid that situation from happening. So cybersecurity, and it's also used more broadly to, to uh, discuss, a, you know, like the profession and, and a field, but in the, a corporate context, cybersecurity and the related controls and methods and practices are put in place to mitigate cyber risk. And what I wanted to mention, and I think this is an important concept, is that cyber risk is not an isolated event. It really should be part of a company's enterprise risk management system and manage the same way that they would protect against, let's say, credit risk or market risk or customer risk. And it's, you know, if you think about the pillars of risk that customers, I'm sorry, that companies have to deal with, cyber risk is, you know, one leg of that multifaceted stool. And the cybersecurity is the program that envelops that to make sure that that risk doesn't materialize in such a way to affect the business. You know, that's an interesting statement. You, when you mentioned enterprise, that would imply, Jim, that you believe that cyber risk is something that can't be categorized with just technology or a CISO, but it's something that since it, it impacts all operations, credit, treasury, finance, that it's an enterprise level. Could you expand a little bit more on that and maybe give mm -hmm. us some, some insight there? Sure, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. That, that's, a, that's a great point. So cybersecurity, when it's done correctly, is in fact, it's an enterprise, it's a business level risk that needs to be addressed through the lens of business because there are business decisions that are being made in terms of you know what you're putting in place spend your you know your team and also the risk tolerance and so it's multifaceted and, and to your point it affects every department in a company and so it needs to have that broad based look and be done at an enterprise level in fact, the companies that tend to struggle with cybersecurity historically are the ones that reduced it to a technology, um, you know, let's say like a technology event, mm -hmm. and they threw technology tools and people at it and tried to kind of contain it within that, you know, technology realm. It is not. It is a business, multifaceted business issue that needs an enterprise view. I think um, 
I think Jim, this is this is maybe I think this is maybe a reason um, why the next question that I wanted to ask that we wanted to ask you is as a risk manager I, I'm always uh, interested in the top five risk um, lists that come up uh, come out every year right uh, for the past five years or plus five years uh, we have been seeing cybersecurity as one of these risks right mm -hmm. and is that maybe what you were just talking about one of these one of these reasons why companies yeah. are not approaching it in the right way uh why do you feel it, it keeps popping up in these lists well and, and that's another great point because you're right about five years ago are, is when companies sort of you know you, all of a sudden you found it as a top level concern top being top five top ten whatever yeah. from companies from boards etc there's a lot of reasons for that and i think part of it is just heightened awareness right because as you know, you, you, we see it all the time in the news, companies get hacked and bad things happen. And, and so, you know, savvy boards of directors or other C-level executives may look at their peer group who went through something like that and was, it was well publicized are thinking, I don't want that to happen to our company. So I remember years ago, we would get pulled into doing a cybersecurity assessment for that reason. You know, again, someone on the board was like, you know what, I just, I have a concern We've never really discussed this. Let's get a professional firm to come in and do an assessment. There's a couple of other things that are driving this awareness as well. It's also regulatory scrutiny. So there are new standards uh, you know, for privacy, for also security that came out. It was about five years ago, different frameworks for cybersecurity came out. So uh, especially for public companies, they had to comply with cyber, you know, like it or not. Um, also, we're seeing increasingly where customers' concerns and expectations have also driven cybersecurity. In other words, it's, you know, years ago, um, security was, you know, it, could either, it was either looked at as sort of like an afterthought, or if a company had really good security, it may have been uh, a driver of business, right? But now it's considered table stakes. In other words, but what I mean by that is customers uh, expect that their data that they send you is going to be secure. And if it's not, it's going to cause a lot of problems, right? And then, you know, lastly, well, not last, there's probably a lot of other reasons, but also even getting cybersecurity insurance. So uh, when companies are, you know, going through their, you know, their risk assessments and they're trying to protect themselves with various business insurance, um, so to get cyber insurance now got harder and harder. And so they want a lot of other things, you know, put in place, you know, to prove that you have something like a well-managed program. It's like if you're getting an expensive life insurance policy, the company wants to make sure you're not going to die of a heart attack or have some other disease. So, they, you know, you have to get um, a physical. Um, and actually, there's one other reason, I think, too, is the advancement in uh, technology, because every time there's new technology coming out, so we've had proliferations in, in cloud, you know, we have AI, we have Internet of Things, all these things come out. And usually security is kind of has to catch up. And so it creates more risk. And, there, you know, there's more cyber events. It just sort of feeds that loop of executive. You know, there's more incidents going on and then you know, executives will look at this and wonder what's going on with their own company and then have it listed as a as a top concern. You know, you said so many things there. I would like to spend like three hours, <laughs> not each little one, but we yeah. can't spend three hours today. But I do have a let's go off script for just a second. I am intrigued if you can, because you speak to CEOs a lot and you probably mm -hmm. have access to boards of directors. Yeah. When they talk cyber risk or cybersecurity with you, what is on their mind? Yeah, that, that's another great point. So, you know, when when I prep, um, you know, my clients for board meetings, you know, whether uh -huh. I go to them or not, what I try to tell them is there's a couple of key questions that you have to ask. How, however you present the data, what's on the board of directors or the CEO's mind is, are we secure? Number one. Um, number two, how do we compare relative to our peer group, right? Because no one's perfect. And, you know, if there's gaps in the program, they want to know, well, you know, what else is going on? Um, and the other thing they want to know, what are my biggest risks? 
So are we susceptible to, let's say, a phishing attack because we haven't done user acceptance testing? Do we have legacy equipment? Are our patch management system you know, out, of, out of whack? And sometimes you have to obviously explain this in non-technical terms, but it's important to answer those questions for them. And you could do it with you know, data and graphs, but in virtually every meeting I've ever been in for, for years, the conversation evolves or revolves around those questions. Interesting. Boy, we could, we could just explore <laughs> that forever, but we won't. We'll move on to something okay. else. You know, the other thing that you mentioned in your last response to Juan, which I, I thought was a great response, Jim, you mentioned a term, Internet of Things, and there's a few terms that are out there jumping around. Uh, I think we all know what remote work means, but yeah. that's a term, the Internet of Things. How do we define that? And then the last thing that just kind of recently has popped up uh, is kind of like when we we're in high school, you bring your own beer. Now it's bring yeah. your own device. Could yeah. you maybe explain those terms for us and for our audience so that we all kind of understand what what the new lingo is? Sure. So, uh, you know, put it in simple terms. So the Internet of Things is essentially any uh, thing that is put on the uh, on the Internet, right? That, you know, and, and we so we think of, of course, you know, our iPhone and laptops, but it, it got a lot bigger starting a couple of years ago. So there are sensors that are used. There are um, you know, manufacturing systems that are put, HVAC systems, et cetera. And all of these things, just because they're on the internet, creates risk. In fact, you know, there was a well-popularized -pop, um, uh, case several years ago where Target was hacked through an HVAC system. Mm -hmm. And the HVAC system was maintained by a vendor who was, had it, you know, internet accessible for maintenance. You know, a lot of manufacturing companies and, you know, and other places have. And never in my life would I have ever thought of putting an HVAC system as a high-risk item in a security report. But there, there it is. And that's not an isolated case. A, a lot of talk about cloud. Um, are there pros and cons to, to the cloud mm -hmm. that we should know about and that we should be concerned about? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think when the cloud is managed appropriately, it can be used as an advantage because it helps provide resumption. And in fact, we've seen companies that do get hit with a cyber attack that have cloud enabled systems. In other words, they're running from the cloud. They could spin things up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. The key thing is in how it, like everything else uh, with information technology, it's, it's how it's managed. There's a lot of confusion with companies when they move things to the cloud. Either they have unrealistic fears where they think, oh, I don't know, my data is not secure in the cloud. Mm -hmm. if, if it's set up correctly, it could probably be more secure in the cloud than it is in your own data center. Because, but there's, you got to check into this. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other companies that think that, oh, they put it in the cloud and kind of set it and forget it. And neither of those spectrums, end of that spectrum is, is true. So what you have to understand is the cloud requires a governance model. It's a shared responsibility between you and the cloud provider. And so you have to really understand who is doing what. And there's a couple of steps that need to be taken. It's very important, right? So, you know, one of them is you have to classify your data. So internally, before you move anything, understand, you know, how, what's confidential, what needs to be protected by regulations, is it medical information, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, understand the local requirements, because in some cases you can't put such data, depending on where you are and state laws and country laws outside of, of the country, or there might be more risk. Um, you also have to look at the procurement side. Uh, the contract is very important to look at those terms, to make sure you understand who is doing what, and also how, what do you do with the data when you end that contract, right? Because how are they securing the data? How are they gonna get it back to you? Um, you know, who owns the data, et cetera. And then, you know, the last piece of course is the architecture and the risk model and security model, meaning, you know, who's gonna be responsible for, for what in terms of security. And you have to check up on them. I've seen horror stories where they've hired a third party, kind of like as a cloud, 
you know, like a managed services and they're using stuff in the cloud and they expect it to be well managed and they don't check up and there's, and they're missing things or they, or a regulator come in for an audit or there's a security assessment and things are out, are out of whack. So you really have to think through that model of where the data is going, how the data is going to be protected. And most importantly, how do you as the company get assurance that that cloud provider is doing all the right things. And it might be, like I said, it's probably some people might be doing it in-house. You might have a team that are putting stuff in the cloud and managing it, but you still have to understand that the whole dynamic. But overall, I think cloud is a very good option for companies. Excellent, excellent. Well, Jim, we're running out of time for today's session, but I'm going to have you back. So we're going to do a second session on this because okay. there's some other questions that I have and Juan has, and there's questions that you prompted with your conversation. So let me start by saying thank you very much for joining us today. And we will My see pleasure. you again very soon. And we'll do this again uh, very shortly.